Have you ever wondered if a CPU can play Crisis in pure CPU rendering mode? Well, with the overclocked 64-core system that I had a couple of weeks ago, I've done just that. Content you can find on Tech Tech Potato. What's your minimum specification? So I'm going to split this video up into three parts. Firstly, I'm going to go over the Crisis, what Crisis is, and the Crisis benchmark. Uh, two, I'm going to go over some gameplay, which I found. And then three is the actual benchmark run itself. Now, if you'd rather skip straight to three, I've got timestamps in the video. But this benchmark is interesting enough that I found a few flaws and a few interesting limits on exactly how well our CPUs can actually run things like Crisis. Now, a big thanks to Anthony Young for over the Linus Tech Tips team. Linus isn't here today. I've got the company credit card. He won't know what hit him. <laughs> I was having some issues with this testing, and he pointed me into the right direction so I can find all of these sort of limitations to do with Crisis. Now, Crisis is a very graphically intensive benchmark, or at least it was when it was released in the late 2000s. And the meme, Can It Play Crisis, kind of arose from that, because no matter what graphics hardware you threw at it, it would have trouble drawing Crisis at you know the peak settings, maximum resolution peak settings. Now we've got much faster graphics cards, and we're dealing with 1080p, 4K, even 8K gaming these days. Can It Play Crisis is that much of a joke. So... What happens if we want to render it purely on the CPU? So we take the graphics card out of the equation and we post, uh, we just set all the commands to render the graphics through the CPU using Microsoft Warp. That's Windows Advanced Rasterization Platform. This is what a system uses if it doesn't detect a GPU or you don't have GPU drivers installed. It sends all commands through the CPU. Now, this is perfectly fine for, say, 2D rendering if you've just got a few windows open. But when you want, re when you start kicking in the 3D, either whether that's OpenGL or DirectX, what the warp driver will do is essentially intercept all those GPU commands and try and run them on the CPU. Um, as you can imagine, because GPUs are like wide vector engines, uh, CPU doesn't do that great compared to the GPU. So in the GPU, when we're seeing you know tens and hundreds of frames per second, the CPU will do single digits frames per second. Um, I've roped this sort of crisis as a CPU benchmark with CPU rendering uh, into my testing at Anantec. It's now part of my regular uh, regular suite of benchmarks, and it's a ridiculous test, obviously. Um, and you can test in, you know, from the low resolutions all the way up to the high resolutions. And uh, I've devised a test in low specifications just so we can see what the frame rates are like in that mode. So that original Crisis game, as we run it today, I'm running the uh, the GOG version, uh, comes in two factors. One is the launch platform that GOG uses to run the main game. Uh, that's it's a custom launcher that's been designed to get over the limitations of what Crisis has just as a standard game. Now, inside some of those uh, folders is the benchmark mode and benchmark scripts. Um, you'll see these in sort of like the bin64 file, and it will say, you know, Crisis uh, or, uh, benchmark underscore CPU, benchmark underscore GPU. And these will run, you know, a short fly-through test in God mode just to see how... Uh, the benchmark, how the game performs in a benchmark mode, and you get you know frames per second out as a result. Um, if you really want to go into detail, you can you know wrap it in something like a fraps and get those frame times out as well. Now, the funny thing is with the benchmark mode is that the benchmark mode doesn't use the wrapper that GOG devised for the game. So the wrapper actually works really well for any sorts of pla any sort of platform. Um, so the way the game works is it does CPU and GPU detection and then kind of uses that as a platform to move forward. The problem is Crisis was designed in an era where dual and dual core CPUs and moving into quad core CPUs was the norm. And you remember we had that sort of 10 years of quad core CPUs being the norm for gaming for quite a while. Now we're in the advent of these 32 core, 64 core, massive Threadripper type systems and going beyond, we'll probably get even more cores to play with. Uh, these games aren't designed for that. They see, they see these CPUs and you get overflows in the integers that record how many cores they have. And this causes an error and it causes the game to break. For Crisis, this is pretty annoying, but it also means it leads to limitations on what the CPU can do. 
So Crisis, when we're testing it in a CPU rendering only mode, has two, maybe three limitations, um, which I've discovered. First limitation is that you can't run it on a system with more than 32 threads. Um, if it detects there's more than 32 threads, uh, it craps out. No, you can't run it. What the wrapper does from GOG is it actually limits that to six threads by using what's called an affinity mask. So if you have one of these large CPUs and you want to run it in a CPU only mode, uh, you can apply your own affinity mask, which tells the CPU, um, it tells the program what threads on the CPU it can use. Um, you may see this, you know, slash affinity FFFFE. Uh, yeah, or FFFF3, something like that, which essentially limits it down to the 32 threads. Now, when you're CPU rendering in a benchmark, you obviously want the peak uh, FPS possible. So you can think of those 32 threads um, and spread them across 32 cores. So each thread has a full core. This is where the second limitation comes in. You can't use more than 23 cores. That seems relatively arbitrary. Um, you can think of it more of sort of like an 8 plus 8 plus 8. For some reason, that's one of the limitations. So you can essentially run this test in either uh, 32 threads over 16 cores or 23 threads over 23 cores. And you, by and large, from what I've tested, they actually perform roughly about the same anyway. Now, the third limitation is an odd one in the fact that you can't enable thread zero on the system. You have to design your affinity mask to not include thread zero. Um, and for the large core count chips, it works. Um, I, on this system that I'm currently recording on, um, I have a 6950X. That's a 10 core, 20 thread system. And it doesn't mind thread zero being used. Uh, but on uh, the W3175X, 28 cores, and on the 64 core thread rippers, you have to disable thread zero, otherwise it won't play ball. So with that in mind, uh, I recorded some gameplay and then we'll move straight on into the benchmark. So before we begin, we're just going to start playing Crisis normally uh, with the RTX 6000 that's just installed inside this magnetar. We should be going up with fraps enabled, a nice 5200 frames per second. Now in order to get a more sense of what the CPU can do, we're just going to be running at a 720p low settings. Um, Got to give a system like this you know, as many chances as we can. Everybody loves long loading sequences. Here we go to crisis. Start playing a game. See you guys at the LZ. And here we go. Straight into the game. And we're experiencing 400 frames per second on a modern graphics card. Now, again, low settings, so not going to expect anything much different. Okay, so let's stop there. And let's get to running it this game on a CPU-only basis. Now, there are various ways in order to enable CPU processing, but the one we're going to use today is uh, Microsoft's Warp. Um, this is a rasterization process, you know, designed for if there's no direct 3D device in the system. So we need to open the device manager, and under displays, we've got this NVIDIA Quadro RTX 6000. Now we're going to right click on that and disable the device. The device will then kick off, warp should then kick in, um, and we'll get you know the situation where you, if you haven't installed GPU drives into a system on a fresh install. And um, it'll take a few seconds to write itself, um, but it should be fine. So now that we've disabled the uh, discrete graphics card, you can see here the Quadro RTX 6000 has this little sign on it saying disabled. So we're now successfully running it in warp mode, Windows Advanced Rasterization Platform. 
And we're just going to load up Crisis. This is the Girl Gamers edition of Crisis, uh, which has its own very special wrapper uh, in order to make the game work. And we'll see how it goes. Now, as you can see, the menus have already gone down from was it four or five thousand FPS down to sixty. So this is going to be interesting. Menus themselves aren't that strict in what they require in terms of performance, but so we are running at uh, 720p at DX9 low settings just to give this a chance. And here we go, jumping out of the plane, and we're down to 20 FPS. 21. Let's put on some night vision. Now, a crisis looks alright even in low, low settings, so. We're on our own, but can you run? On the 3990X. My shoot is gone. My damn shoot is gone. I've got no pain, no reserve. I'm okay. I'm okay. But my heart scrambled. What the hell was that? I don't know. Miss Neil Z. So, very basic water effects. Uh, 14, 15 frames a second. Right now, with no action going on, this is somewhat playable, I guess. Speed. Objectives. Go meet that guy. Okay. Go prone. Let's pick up a barrel. Let's throw the object and melee. So yeah, twenty twenty FPS, twelve. Okay, now we're getting into something. Eleven. Where did that come from? Sixteen, fifteen, fourteen. How many rounds has this got? Frames a second. See the lighting effects coming down to 12 FPS. Looking at the ground, we get 20. This is all running off the CPU. Just don't ask about efficiency. Sound off now! Don't get in the mud! Don't get in the mud! Don't get in the mud! 
and there we go. Let's let's do that for crisis. Thirteen frames a second, dipping down to ten. Yeah, I can see how in a firefight that won't be playable. But this is what we've got, and this is the power of the thirty nine ninety X. And there you have it. That's Crisis running in CPU rendering on an overclocked 4 GHz 3990X. Now, can you think, is this your minimum specification? <laughs>